London, one of the greatest cities in the world, and the place of which Dr. Johnson said that if you were tired of it, you were tired of life. Like all big cities, London is made up of an uncountable number of elements, from office blocks to public parks, railway stations to underpasses, slums to palaces. But the great danger for all big cities is that as they become more prosperous, expanding upwards and outwards, the mechanics of city living create an environment from which most people recoil, so that the city centres tend to become depopulated, frozen monuments to bad planning. This film is about an area of central London called Pimlico, whose collective mind has, for the last 25 years, resisted this tendency both consciously and subconsciously, and whose local government authority has taken careful steps to protect the interests of its residents. One such resident, who is himself taking a great deal of interest in the future of Pimlico as a place to live, is author and journalist Ian Nairn. His interest is professional as well as personal, since his subject is architecture and environment. His highly personal approach to the subject emphasizes the needs of people, and his particular concern is with how modern cities can be preserved as a satisfactory unit of communal living. I'm a city man. I really enjoy living in cities. I also enjoy living in a human scale. So here in Pimlico, in London, I'm living in a village that's right in the middle of the biggest city in Europe. It seems to me this particular village, by mixture of accident and design, has got most of what it takes to make city living really enjoyable. The three main problems when you come up against cities that expand violently, often the old residential areas are swamped by new blocks of offices, and as a result, the old environment's completely swept away or else traffic comes roaring down streets which are never intended to take it. And there's quite a lot of that in London, I'm afraid. Or the people who lived in the large houses abandon them, move out to the suburbs, and they become slums. And we've got quite a lot of that in London, too. But we do have these mixed-up villages and cities, which I think probably London has more than anywhere else. And this one, Pimlico, got here has grown over the last 20 years by a kind of process of what Jane Jacobs would call unslumming. It was just about ready to become a ghetto and through a succession of deliberate actions the environment has improved. It's improved in the last 10 years since I've been here. Pimlico really is in the very heart of London. Over there, Victoria Station, where the Continental trains come in. And the rail tracks mark the western boundary of Pimlico. Ten minutes walk away over to the northeast is a whole historic area of Westminster. Big Ben, Houses of Parliament, the Abbey, the lot. And coming round to join them up in a great sweep to the south is the River Thames. So Pimlico really is a place with distinct boundaries. And one of the ways that Pimlico has tried to keep these boundaries is by reducing the through traffic. Commuters used to use these little residential streets as a shortcut, but the Westminster authorities decided to make kind of traffic maze here to stop them driving through. So they put up no entry signs and made a few one-way streets. And in fact, in quite a big area, there are only five ways into it. And it's impossible for a car coming in to cross straight over and find a direct way out much quicker to go round. So the through cars have vanished. The streets and the crossroads are quiet again, and there's plenty of room for the residents to park, which is fine for the residents, but there are non-residents who really need to be here, like doctors. Well, doctor, how do you feel about this scheme? You must see the rough end of it, having to visit patients all over it and do a fair amount of toing and froing. I think it's a marvelous idea. It doesn't affect me very much because residents and myself, we know the system. So it's very easy to find our way around it, but it cuts down the through traffic. So as, as you can see, there's plenty of room to park. If you have four or five patients in this area, what would you do? Would you leave the car one place and walk to them, or do you have to do a lot of one-waying in and out again? I, yes, but often you can arrange around so that you can put your car in one spot mm, yeah. and walk mm. two or three calls. So that's... 
And anyway, we need the exercise. <laughs> you can say that again for me. Thanks very much, Doctor. I'm, I am delighted that it, it really does work for you as, as a professional. I was afraid, you know, it, it might make your life much harder. Well, that was old Pimlico. And by an irony, solving the traffic problems of the 1970s has made this place look much more like the 1860s, which is when it was built. The doctor lives across the street there in Churchill Gardens. It's a huge post-war council estate put up by Westminster. It's perhaps the most important thing that's happened to modern Pimlico. Well, here it is, Churchill Gardens. It's a very impressive scheme. It started just after the war, and it replaced a mixture of bomb damage and the slummiest part of old Pimlico. What the council did was to make an architectural competition of it. It was won by two people who teamed up to win the competition. And now one of Britain's leading firm of architects, Powell and Moyer. And for its time, it was, I reckon, probably the best in Britain. There's so many good ideas about it. The planting, the sequence of footpaths through the squares. The whole lot is in fact, heated from Battersea Power Station across the river. Some of the things have dated. Some of the things were problems that really weren't even known about. You had to build the problems first to find out that they were problems, like this repetition of a lot of slabs of tall flats. The fact that so many more people own cars now than they did then, that the parked cars on the streets tend to swamp the estate. Even so, it's a pretty good job. It still is a pretty good job. Well, that was my view of Churchill Gardens as an outsider, but you know, both residents, next door neighbours, and this terrace facing the Thames. How do you feel about it? The view is absolutely marvellous. Yeah. It changes all the time. Yes. And you don't just get river traffic. You get the, you know, the trains, the railway, the airplanes, helicopter port up the river. Yes. yes, everyone seems to be amazed. This is where the doctor lives in Churchill Gardens. He's got a big and pretty luxurious house, yes. considering it fronts the Thames and it's very near the House of Parliament. But the difference between this and the rest of the estate is that the doctor pays an economic rent for this, something equivalent to what a private landlord would charge. Hello, Mrs. Hyatt. Oh, hello. Pleased to meet you. Got a nice day for it, anyway. Yeah, thank you. Would you like to come Yeah. But of course, most of the housing in Churchill Gardens, like this flat, is heavily subsidised. You do this. The hireds pay about a, a third of the rent that the doctor does. They've still got plenty of room. They're even looking after a friend's daughter at the moment. The thing about Pimlico, the great thing about it, is that there's a mixture of peoples and incomes. And it's a mixture which has been deliberately encouraged by the council. Churchill Gardens, which started this, was good of its time. I don't think it's perfect. And I do think that the council have made good some of the mistakes of Churchill Gardens in the newer estate that they're building in Lillington Street. Fifteen years after Churchill Gardens, Westminster Council decided to rebuild another bit of Pimlico, and that, as far as I know, is going to be the end of it. There's not going to be a mass clearance of Pimlico. And what they did was ask the architect of Churchill Gardens, that's Powell and Moyer, who by then had become a famous firm, to act as assessors in a new competition, just as Churchill Gardens was created. And that, in its turn, brought out a young firm and got together just for the job called Darwin and Dark, who are, in their turn now, one of the most promising pair of young architects in Britain. And they created something completely different from Churchill Gardens, something, I think, better. One of the nicest things about it is that on the main fronting street over there, Patchbrook Street, you can see through the arch. We've got completely modern architecture on one side, and the Victorian terraces, which are to be preserved, which are freehold houses on the other. It's private enterprise and local government working side by side. The council have been very wise, you know, in the way they've chosen some of us. Mm -hmm. My two immediate neighbours are two retired people. Put the families together mm -hmm. and they put the, uh, fam the, the parents with uh, older children together. Mm -hmm and they put the elderly people together. 
And if they've got bad sight or disabled, they've put them into the bed sitters where there are no stairs. But they've still got, of course, a well-equipped kitchen mm. yes. and central heating yes. and everything else. Mm. Here in the Linton Street, everything's closed in, integrated. The whole thing folds around you. And all the things that were separate ideas in Churchill Gardens are built in here. For example, the cars are not on the streets, they're down there under the grass. And over there is an old people's home, quite a lot of old people, not shunted off idly into a separate building, but actually built into the fabric of the rest of Pimlico, integrated, living together, not in isolated units. Lillington Street's not only comfortable to live in, it's very easy to get to the shops. But this is no suburban estate that's pretty to look at. You have to drive miles to get to the supermarket. The shopping streets are only a few yards away, and they extend all the way to Victoria, where they merge into the big city shops up there. I'm at my office desk, or one of them. This pub's in the bottom of the Lillington Street estate. It was put in, <coughs> designed by the same architects. I think they've made a very good job of reinterpreting the essence of an English pub without loading it with Victoriana. And I find that three quarters of an hour in a pub like this, I can work much better than I can in my home or my office where the telephone's ringing all the time. This kind of background buzz of conversation gives a real internal privacy. I doubt if half a dozen people in Pimlico know where I am today. That's marvellous. It doesn't mean it's indifferent. There's friendliness there. It's not the trumpeted indifference of big cities. Not the thing that happens in all but a very few streets in New York, for example. And I think the real reason is that this is a village inside the city. It's got the best of both worlds. And this, for me, is exactly what city living, living in Pimlico is. If I had to sum up how to make a village inside the city, one or two obvious things like no through traffic, but also no colossal absence of traffic, no vast arrangement to take everything out of it and leave all the vitality out. But most of all, the mixture of people and uses and attitudes and temperaments, all rubbing along together, not segregated, not set up as one half being workers and one half being professionals, men and women or anything else, just, just people, people working together, acting together, making a place together, and not trying too hard to do it, not uptight about it. That's Pimlico for me, and London. <laughs>